Give me Psalms 103. Starting from verse 1, Psalms 103. I heard the Lord says, before we go, oh, Shorobakatu Nakede. I heard the Lord says that even right now, we are going to decree that the kingdom, the administration of heaven will come into oneness with the governments of the nations. Makarata Banasa. Lord, we thank you that you have given the, cho- the, the, the voice of heaven, the voice of the Spirit to your church. And you have given to us the scepter and the keys to decree. And we thank you, Lord, even right now, we declare that there will be oneness, that your will, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven that your kingdom administration will come into oneness with the governments of the nations of the earth. We decree your oneness. We decree that heaven shall invade the earth and it shall be intertwined together into oneness. Psalms 103. We done? Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless His holy name, all that's within us, Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His what? Benefits. What are the benefits? There are six benefits here. The first one, He, the verse 3, He has forgives all your iniquities. That's the first benefit forgiveness second benefit he heals all your diseases that's the second one healing third benefit verse 4 he redeems your life that's the third one redemption fourth benefit he crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy oh he crowns you that's a crowning verse 5 the fifth one he satisfies your mouth with good things. There is satisfaction that comes that brings fulfillment. And the sixth one, he renew your youth like an eagle. Renewal. God is going to renew you. He's going to satisfy you. He's going to crown you. Just as he redeems you, just as he heals you and forgives you, all these are the benefits of the cross. This is not a ritual. This is an invocation that brings an appropriation of every covenantal blessings that Jesus has done for us. And today, as we appropriate that, you are going to receive all these six benefits. Father, we thank you for that. Jesus, we thank you. Lord, even right now, we thank you for all the benefits of the covenantal blessing of the cross of your body and your blood receive it church let's take the body together and we thank you for the blood of the covenant the blood that washes us and watches over us Let's drink the blood. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated, team. Thank you. Wonderful Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory. Welcome again to Asia Revival Center. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to those who are watching us online from the nations. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Praise God Almighty. Welcome to the presence of God. Welcome to the place and the time where God is moving and when God is speaking 
and when God is up to something good and great. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. Wonderful Jesus. Now, today is a special day, just as every day is a special day. Are you guys awake here? Oh, Lord, shut up. I say today is a special day, just as every day is a special day. Amen? Hallelujah. Because every day with the Lord is special. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall be glad in it, regardless whether it's a Sunday or Monday. Every day, we should be glad in the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. God Almighty, that wakes you up a little. <laughs> Praise God. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, oh, where's the mic for you, Susan? Come. The woman of God. Come. I believe you have much to say. <laughs> this is on. There we go. Oh, it's great to be with you today. I, I, I do kind of sense this serious, serious uh, attitude today. I think you must sense that the Lord is calling you to something new. As I've been here and had an opportunity to be in this service, you know, it's just amazing to me, Pastor Terrence, because so many of the things you were saying, you were saying as I was thinking it. Even words I'm thinking, you, you said it at the same time. Amen. And one of the things that I felt is there's a shift that's coming to this ministry and a shift that's coming to these to these people. And it may seem as if it's a serious thing, but you will go forth with strength and the joy of the Lord to accomplish what it is. So we're going to talk about that a little more as uh, the message is released tonight. Uh, but I do want to just uh, minister, if I could, to Pastor Terrence and to Tiara, where is she? If you guys could come on up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. I thank you, Jesus. First of all, I want to share with you guys that I know that the name of your ministry is Asia Revival Center. But I keep hearing Apostolic Revival Center. Hallelujah. And I feel that the Lord is calling you to reestablish the power of the apostolic in this land, in the, in the lands in the region. And that even as the apostolic is established, not only through the work that you do, but through the people that you equip, when they go forth as the generals of whom you just spoke, they will go into the land and they will apostolically establish God's very purpose, not only for the whole nation, but for regions within the nations. And he says, son and daughter, in the days ahead, I'm going to send you to groups of people you've not yet met, but they are people that are already on your heart. Daughter, the Lord has already begun to move upon your heart in a very deep way. And he's given you a desire to reach people in many nations of the earth. And as you look at your world, you say, God, how can I do such a thing with the responsibilities I now have? But the Lord says, I am going to not only cause you to go, but I am going to cause you to raise up others who will go. And you will send many teams to many nations that I've already put on your heart. And as they go forth, they will go forth with a sword in their hand, with a song in their heart. They will be shod with the gospel of peace upon their feet, and they will apostolically establish my purpose in those lands. And the Lord says, son, as your wife even raises up, because I see many teams of women and families going forth, and as she begins to impart and raise them up to go to the places that I'm sending those those, those teams, you will see that I am going to bring those apostolic families into this ministry, those who the husband and the wife and the children are called to carry an anointing of the apostolic to go forth and break the strongholds of the enemy and bring forth the truth of Jesus Christ and show forth the light of the kingdom. And the Lord says, son, there are things that I want you to write. There are many ideas that you have, and you've written things in ways to present those things. Things, but I want you to begin to write them in books because the revelation that I give you is revelation that I need to have shared among my body 
throughout Asia and throughout many nations of the earth. And as you write more books, you will begin to see the more you write, the more ideas you will have. And you will begin to see that there are already ideas that have been churning deep within your spirit. And I'm going to give you all of the steps necessary to take those ideas and put them in place and bring them to print so that it can bless my people, equip my church so my bride will go forth to do what I've called her to do. And the Lord says, son and daughter, I've called you to be a couple who will raise up my bride, not just a bride who will go forth and call Jesus Lord and know how to worship, but a bride that will go to war and war on behalf of the kingdom of God and war for the nations of God and war for my purposes to be accomplished. So he says, even now, there's a greater mantle and anointing being placed on each of you that you will walk with my authority and with my power in greater ways ways and yet a humility that will bring strength will be manifest wherever you go and he says son and daughter begin to proclaim my word with boldness and authority even in some of the darkest of places and you will see that my protection will be around about you and as you proclaim my word it will pierce the ears of those who will hear it will go to the very heart of the matter and those who are able to make a difference will rise up and begin to walk out the prophetic promises that you give so father i thank you that even as they are called to shift in this season <clears throat> that they will shift according to your plan. And Father, I thank you that in the shifting, though they have eyes for the nations, the Father, you are going to allow them to release ministry to the people. And Lord, their eyes for the nations will never be more powerful than the ministry that they release to the people. And Father God, I thank you that you're even bringing forth a greater anointing of healing and of miracles to be released in this place so that the people of God will be strong to go forth and do mighty exploits in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. <clears throat> now, this is pretty exciting, don't you think? Because God is doing a new thing. And those of you who come to this place have been, whether you realize it or not, there's been a stirring in your heart for something more than what you had previously experienced. And you didn't know what the more was, but I'm telling you, you came, you faithfully come, and you've, you've noticed that worship is great, the prophetic is great, you sense the anointing here, it's a blessing and it's great, but I'm telling you, that was just preparing you for the more that God has. Because he's calling this place to be that warrior bride that we just talked about. He's calling those who become a part of this ministry, whether you're, you know, I know that this ministry is a little unusual and many come from various churches, but when you come and you sit under this teaching, God is equipping you to be that warrior bride to begin to go forth as the generals of which you spoke that will go forth and tear down the strongholds of the enemy and, and cause the kingdom of God to be built and to be established in your your family how many of you feel overwhelmed by situations in your family and you think that God will never have his way because the enemy has come against your family too strong too hard or there are too many unbelievers stand up would you please struggling and weary about the problems you face with your family amen let's lift our hands before the Lord Father God, you see these people who are standing and you know every circumstance, situation that they face. But nothing is too great for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release the strength of your anointing to go into each person who is standing, that they will release the prayer and the prophetic decree over their family that your will be accomplished in every situation. And Father, we thank you that we are going to hear testimonies of salvation happening in their family. And Father, as these people declare that darkness must flee, it will flee. 
And as these people take authority over the stronghold of the enemy that has even been for generations in their family, the strongholds will be broken and they will trample on the head of the enemy. And Father, I thank you that as these people are standing, every member of their family will come into the kingdom of God. So we praise you now and we thank you, Lord, that salvation will be great in these families. And we were going to hear the reports of the spirit of the Lord moving and hearts being turned to Jesus. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The Lord wants to do a mighty thing in these people. I feel, first of all, you know, sometimes I get so focused on my assignment that I forget to do the pleasantries. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I, I want to tell you, I thank Angela because Angela has introduced me to Penang. And um, I, I, I thank and appreciate Vera because they come with me and, you know, they kind of... Uh, watch over me and they make sure I get whatever I need, but they also have a heart for the people here. And I'm so excited to be able to partner together with Angela and Vera who are kingdom minded and they wanna see the people in Penang fulfill the destiny of God. And then I have to extend a thank you, of course, to the Chews who I think are back there, right? Yeah, because I met them as a result of Angela inviting me to Penang. And you know, their heart for the kingdom of God is just amazing to me. I, I pray, Pastor Terrence, that we have thousands of people like them join the body of Christ. Amen. People who are kingdom minded, who have successful business, who know how to do the work of the Lord so they can build the kingdom of God, but they don't hold it all to themselves. They share it with others and they say, come in and join our comp party. Come in and join our company because we're doing something for the sake of the Lord. So I want to thank you guys because you made the invitation so I could be here with this great man of God. And this great woman of God, wherever she went, taking care of children. You know, it's an honor. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because we should never just overlook a connection that God makes. Right? I met Angela maybe six, seven years ago. And some people may have thought, well, it was a casual meeting and nothing's going to come of the meeting. But who would have thought that long ago that the me our casual meeting, our short, brief meeting would end up in a series of events that brought me here to be in this place, to be able to speak to this, these people who are called to be many are called to be generals. All of you are called to be in the army so that you can change this nation. You can change this region to change this nation, to change this this whole area of the earth. Is that amazing? Don't take anything lightly. So I want to thank all of you and I want to thank the Lord God because he had a plan and he brought me here. So now I'm going to go back to work. Is that okay? I hope you guys forgive me for not remembering to do that. All right. So it's exciting as I'm here, I feel that there are some people there's in the congregation who have an influence in government. You may not be in the highest position of government, but you are close to it, and you have influence in government. Is there anybody here? You can just raise your hand. Anybody who would say, yes, I have an influence, I have a voice in government. Do I see any hands up? My eyes aren't as good as they once were. Okay, it doesn't have to be directly, indirectly. Well, I, I, I just want to pray for you, okay? So just, you don't have to stand up, but I just want to pray. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you have those who know you who also have a voice in government. And Lord, even as the word and the prophetic word went forth earlier, I thank you that the word will come to pass and you will use this man to begin to be an influence even in government. That he will be able to pray as you would have him pray. So that, the, so that your plan and your purpose will be accomplished, that he will be, begin to declare your purposes over situations that he sees that are not correct, that are not right situations, so that the per plans of the government will align according to your plans. And Father God, that you will give him favor with man, 
that he will walk in favor and they will hear him speak because as he speaks your words of wisdom, they will have ears to hear. They may not know that it's from our God, but they will hear because they will know it is a truth that they need to hear. I thank you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I also feel that there are some in the room who um, have a, uh, you're, you're trying to establish a business. And that in the process of building the business, uh, you've had some success, but you've had some challenge. And I feel that there are some who are even to the place of wondering whether or not they're supposed to continue in the business. Is there anybody in this room who's struggling with business, who's trying to establish business, and you're kind of wondering about the next step? Would you raise your hand? Hallelujah. Would you stand up so I can see where you are? Stand up. Wasn't that prophetic word powerful that, that Pastor Terrence shared? That it will come to pass? that the promises will be fulfilled, that we need to rest them in and, and know them and believe them. So lift your hands before the Lord. Father, I praise you and I thank you for each one who is standing, who is representative of those who are called to build your kingdom by bringing finances in. Finances to send people to the nations, finances to bring supplies that will meet the needy, finances to help build ministries and churches. Father God, not for the sake of man's glory, but for the sake of doing your work. And Lord, I thank you for these who are standing, that they have their own personal needs that still have to be met. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, as they are men and women of great faith, I thank you that you will meet their faith, that you will supply their need, that you will give them the wisdom and the strategies necessary for their businesses to be successful. And, Lord, I thank you that as they walk into this place of success, that they are going to see an increase and a greater increase. And as the increase comes, they will be looking for places to plant the financial seed to continue to build the kingdom of God. And, Lord, I thank you that though they may be those who work full-time in business, that they are also many are those who are called to be your army. Some are called to be those generals that they will establish your truth in their business and in this city. So, Father, I thank you that you will bless them, that you will give them your wisdom, that you will show them your ways, and that they will prosper all the days of their lives according to your will, according to your blessing, according to the fullness of your promises in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. So, as I was here, and as I was praying here in worship, and praying for this uh, message even before I came, I felt as if the Lord wanted to share with me a message about uh, serving the Lord, and how when we serve the Lord, and we're having problems, and we're seeing challenges, we have to get to the very root of the problem, the very root of the issue that we're dealing with, and we need to recognize uh, why we're having the problems we have. Amen. Sometimes we have problems because we're just lazy. Hmm. Sometimes we have problems because we're insecure. Sometimes we have problems because we've created our own problems and now we have to work ourselves out of a mess, right? And sometimes when we're in those situations, we blame the devil for everything. The reality, reality is God has given us a free will and we must choose the right thing according to God's way in order to walk in the fullness of his promises, amen? And so... And then sometimes we're doing the very best that we can do in any situation and we still have struggles and it's, we don't know what's going on and it is the devil because he's trying to come against you and stop you from doing what God has called you and created you to do and discourage you and cause you to turn away from the Lord. Amen? So sometimes that happens and it is the devil. But you know, sometimes God allows things to happen in our life because his ultimate desire for you is that you become more like Christ Jesus. And in the midst of the challenge, your heart softens, your will weakens, 
your self-drive mm, softens and you begin to look to the Lord to do it his way instead of your way. And then when you do things his way instead of your way, there's tremendous blessings of the Lord. The blessings that will overtake you. The blessings that will take your breath away. They may not be the blessings you thought you wanted five years ago. But when you're walking according to the will of the Lord, they're the blessings that you know you need right now. Amen? And that's the promise of God. But in order for us to get that way, in order for us to get to that place, we also have to recognize that all around us, if we look at the world around us, there are many issues that are, are negative issues, many challenges that we face, and we have to get to the very root of those issues, and we can't just walk away from them. Because even as you walk in the fullness of promise that God has for your life, you have a responsibility to make the way so others can do the same. That's why he's called us to come together united, to be united as one, to build and establish God's kingdom, to establish his kingdom purposes right here on the earth. So as we look at the issues around us and we see all of the um, ungodly choices being made by people or being made by businesses or whatever it is, we have to really get to the very root of that issue. And the root of that issue is death is trying to push out life. Right? Are you guys with me? I understand what you're saying, Pastor, Pastor Terrence. They're just like, I'm not sure where they are. Now, death, which comes from the enemy, is trying to push out the life of Jesus Christ that has been promised us. Has that happened? And so we can't just let that happen. We have to actively come against it. We actively come against the enemy's plan when we correct our hearts, our motives, our attitudes, and line up with God's will. We actively come against enemy's plan when we allow the situations and the circumstances in our lives to mold us and shape us to be more like Jesus Christ. Amen? We also actively come against the enemy's plans when we forcefully go into the camp of the enemy and tear down the stronghold that the enemy has tried to establish in our life or in situations or in nations or in people or in families. And so... I wanted to talk today about how the enemy is trying to steal and bring death. He's trying to steal death to our dreams or bring death to our dreams. He's trying to steal our freedom. He's trying to steal the fullness of life that God has promised us on this earth. He's tried to steal health. And he's even tried to steal the destiny of many people. This nation is a nation of destiny. And I know I've shared before, and others have shared before me, that this nation is called to be a doorway to all of Southeast Asia. But Penang, amen, amen, amen. Penang is called to be a gateway to Malaysia. Amen. And then Malaysia is called to be a doorway to Southeast Asia. Well, guess where the enemy's going to come and try to stop? Penang. You have a call on your life and the enemy, and you have a call in this region, and the enemy is going to do everything to stop God's call. Didn't he do that with Jesus? Didn't he try to tempt him before Jesus even got started, right? He was baptized, went in the wilderness, and right away the enemy came against him. If the enemy came against Jesus, the very Son of God, don't you think that he's going to come against you when you try to follow the Son of God? He is. And so we have to get right to the very core of what's happening to stop this nation from doing what God has called it to do. I appreciate, as Pastor Ter Terrence prophesied about the generals coming, he is so absolutely right about that. One of the grievous, most grievous things I experience when I work with the church here in Asia, and I do throughout many nations of Asia, is that I see Asians look at Westerners as the ones who have the anointing. And I'm telling you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the same anointing for me as it is for you. God didn't pour out a greater anointing in the United States. The anointing and power of Holy Spirit is here for every single believer who's willing to walk in it. 
but the enemy will come against you and lie to you and tell you you're not good enough or somebody else has to do it when in reality you're the one God has called to do it. You're the one who's going to bring your family to salvation. You're the one who's going to build the kingdom of God with the finances God puts in your hand. And you're going to do it when you walk with the anointing of God be, that's there for you. So you have to turn to the Holy Spirit and move in his power and his anointing. It's not just for me because I'm from the U.S. It's not just for me because I'm a minister. It's not just for Pastor Terrence because he's the leader of this ministry. It is for every single believer to walk in the power and the gift and the grace of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we have to begin to see that God has called you to rise up and to come against the enemy. And what I feel that God especially has called this church to do, be is to be a warrior bride. So I asked the media team to put up a picture of a warrior bride if you guys got it okay. Isn't this a neat picture? Now you can just imagine that here the bride is in her bridal gown. Now men, you're the bride of Christ, right? So you're okay with this. Amen. Because as the bride of Christ, you're dressed with the purity of Christ. So here this bride is in a white bridal gown rep representing purity. But don't you love the fact that she is putting on her boots with a sword in, at her side, with the Lion of Judah right there ready to go to battle with her, overseeing, making sure that it's all okay, and she is getting ready to go to battle. And that's where you are right now. You are, a, you are a ministry that enters into great worship. And you come into the presence of God if you partake and enter into the worship that's offered here. You come into the presence of God, and it, it is a place where God can break your heart, can hold your heart in his hand, and begin to shape your heart so it becomes what he wants it to be, where he's breathing his very life, his very purpose into your heart. And when you leave this place, you go and do what you need to do, and you feel good because you've been, a, been in a great presence of God. It's good. Um, but the world comes against you. Circumstances come against you, and you begin to get discouraged again, and you can't wait to get back so you can get in the presence of God. Amen. And that's not a bad thing, but it's not the best thing. See, when you leave here as the bride of Christ, you need to have those, your boots on, your combat boots on, ready to go to war, because even though you walk covered by the purity of Jesus Christ, even though you know that you have that intimate relationship with the Lord, the enemy is going to send things your way to try to discourage you and cause you to turn away. And he's calling this ministry to rise up as the warrior bride to begin to do warfare over the lives of people over this region so that the prophetic word of God, those prophetic promises, can be accomplished as God has called them to be accomplished. So God has given us all that we need to do warfare. I feel that the Lord is telling you that it's time for you to sharpen your sword, time for you to strengthen your armor, because he is positioning you to take more territory at this time. The enemy is trying to cause interference before every victory. So when you get close to the victory, that's why I like the thing about the darkest before the dawn. You're getting close to the victory and it seems so dark because the enemy wants to rob the victory from you. So he's trying to cause inter interference before every victory. And you, may, you will see that battles will rage around you but as you press through as a warrior bride, you will begin to see more and greater victories in the coming season when you walk in the authority that God has given you, the authority that was demonstrated by Jesus. You know, Jesus changed our eternity by dying for us, didn't he? He made a way for us to be with God for all eternity. But Jesus also changed the way we should live our lives while on earth because he lived for us and he demonstrated how to live victoriously. Even though the world came against him, 
Jesus was victorious, wasn't he? Did he stop fulfilling the call that God had on his life? Did he quit ministering to people at any time because people, no. I mean, don't you love the fact that Jesus is ministering to people he's trying to teach and, and all of those leaders and those religious people are getting so upset so they all decide, okay, we're going to stone him and Jesus just kind of slowly slips away and they don't even know where he went. Amen. You can do the same thing. See, as you enter into warfare, there may be those who want to come against you, those who want to destroy you, those who, so to speak, want to stone you. But with the grace of God, you can walk away. You just walk away. They won't even know where they went so we, or where you went. So we have to know God's written word. We must receive his prophetic word from others and hear God's voice for ourselves and for others so we can move according to the leading of the Lord. See, we're not supposed to go pick a fight, but we're supposed to run to the battle that God sends us to, right? We're not supposed to run away from a fight, but we're only supposed to fight the battles that God has assigned to us. So that means we have to know his voice, we have to recognize his voice, so we go when he tells us to go. And we don't go if it's not our fight. Amen. Sometimes that's why people get discouraged. So we have to know God's written word, Again, receive his prophetic word from others. Hear his voice for ourselves. Recognize the way God communicates to you, whether it's a picture or a sensing or a voice or a dream or whatever it is. Know how it is that God is telling you what he wants you to know and what he wants you to do. And then believe what God tells you. Believe the promises that he's given you. See, God will not leave you while the enemy tries to carry out his destructive plans against you. You are not in this alone. When we saw that picture of the bride, we saw that she was not alone. Jesus was right there with her. As she's preparing to go to battle, she's not going to go to battle by herself, but she's going to go to battle with the Lord. Even when preparation, the Lord was with us. Even when we go to battle, the Lord is with us. Even when we celebrate at the wedding, right? The Lord is with us in the time of celebration, that intimate relationship that we have in worship. And in the time of warfare, the Lord is with us. And he will not leave you alone when you're fighting or when you're celebrating. He's right there with you. He will speak to you and he will allow you to use what has been given so that you can have the victory. So I want to just briefly touch on the armor of God, the whole armor of God. I'm sure you're familiar with with this in Ephesians 6, um, chapters 10 through 20. Um, I'm going to just briefly talk about it. You know, it could be a whole big teaching on the armor of God, but I want us to realize that the Lord has given us what is necessary so that we can be protected when the enemy comes against us. And we know in starting in verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Well, first of all, I want to help us remember that we are strong in the Lord and his power. We're not, the scripture's not saying be strong in your own strength, do it your way, build your own muscle and fight the fight your way. Scripture's telling us be strong in the Lord and in his might because he can overcome every challenge. He can come over everything that the enemy would send our ways. And then put on the whole armor of God that you may able to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Reminding us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities, powers, the rulers of darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I just want to briefly remind us as we look at that verse, you know, the person who disagrees with you at work is not your enemy. Did you know your husband or your wife is not your enemy? Right? Your children who are disobedient are not your enemies. Right? The people who don't see things the way you see things, who believe things differently, are not your enemy. Our enemy is the enemy of God. Our enemy is the spirit of darkness. Because he tries to stop the work of the Lord being done on this earth. 
So quit looking at people and getting angry with people and talking to each other about other people and beginning to talk about how they just didn't do it right and they didn't do it this way. Instead, look at God and say, God, how do I win this battle? Do I need to yield my heart because I'm being too strong-willed or stubborn? Mm. Do I need to show love so that they can be embraced and know that you have a promise for them? Do I need to forgive first so that I can build a bridge? See, it's not people that we fight against. It's the enemy of God that is also the enemy of man. So we have to remember who we're fighting all the time. Always remember who we're fighting. And then it goes on to say, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And it goes to say, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. See, when we know the truth, it overcomes every lie the enemy speaks to us. When you know the truth, the lies, the temptations, the fears, the doubts, the unbelief that the enemy tries to bring your way will have no power. When you're, you have truth right around your middle, I mean, anything that comes your way is not going to be able to stand because every lie is going to just be deflected right off that belt of truth. So we have to know God's word. We have to know his promise so we can, can have our waist surrounded by truth that nothing will come close. And then having put on the breastplate of righteousness. What I love about this breastplate of righteousness is it's righteousness is the closest thing to your heart when you look at the armor of God. See, we should love to walk in the righteousness of God. Not in um, religion. Not in judging others who don't walk like us. But we should allow the Lord to shift and change our hearts the way it needs to be changed that we can be more like Christ. And so the breastplate of righteousness is the closest thing to our heart because God loves righteousness and he wants us to love what he loves. When we walk in righteousness, we will treat people as we should. We will honor people as we should. When we walk in righteousness, it really is very simple. It just boils down simply to two things. What did Jesus say? Love God and love others. When we walk in righteousness, we will be able to love God and love others. Amen? And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And we know that that's the gospel of peace. It's the peace of the Lord. It's the, the promise of all things being fulfilled, the fullness of God's plan for mankind. We need to expect that wherever we go, we take that message. We take that word, that Jesus is Lord, that God has a better plan. And as we walk with the, the gospel of peace on our feet, we need to know that we are beginning to establish establish God's peace wherever we go. We're going to do a prophetic demonstration in just a little bit. And when we do the demonstration, we're all going to do it, right? It'll wake everybody up. And when we do the demonstration, remember that you have the gospel of peace on your feet. And as we do it, it's, you're going to be just prophetically demonstrating, releasing the gospel wherever you go. Hallelujah. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, one of the things I love about this scripture, of course, it talks about the shield of faith, but it also says the fiery darts. You know, fiery darts are not very big. When, God, when the enemy comes against us, sometimes we feel like it's this big gun being blown at us and our whole world is shaken. But the reality is he doesn't have that kind of power. He just has these little darts coming our way. That's not very big. Now, they may be fiery. They might burn. They might sting a little bit. But really, what can a dart do? It can only do what you allow it to do. 
And here's the thing. These little fiery darts come your way, and you have the shield of faith, and so a fiery dart comes, and it says, you're not worthy, and your faith goes up because of Jesus Christ, I'm worthy. You don't have what it takes. My, through Christ, I have all things, right? You're too weak. The joy of the Lord is my strength, right? So you allow the shield of faith, faith in God's word, faith in God's promises, faith in God's prophetic words to you to be the thing that stops the lie of the enemy that tries to stop you. Isn't that exciting? I mean, isn't it neat how God gives us all of these things that we need because he knows what's coming against us. And then it says, and take the helmet of salvation. We all know that the greatest battle that we face is in our mind, at least for me. I don't know about you. But I, my battle's in, the battleground is in my mind. And I'm telling you, it could be because of my emotions. It could be because of my concerns. It could be whatever it is. But the enemy will come, come and try to bring thoughts into my mind that will discourage me before I even get started. That will cause fear before I even take a step. I'll be so afraid I won't even try something. Right? I, I want to be honest. Now, Pastor Terrence probably isn't like this a bit. But I'm going to tell you, every time I'm getting ready to speak at a service, I have fear. I'm nervous. I'm thinking, what are you doing? Why do you think you do this? You can't do this. Who do you, you know, and the enemy comes, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are to go speak to those people? It's a constant battle because the enemy tries to stop me. The only way I win that battle is when I enter into the presence of the Lord. I, I, I know the truth about who I am. I protect my mind against the onslaught of the enemy. And I do that in worship and I do that in praying in tongues, right? And the more I pray in tongues, the more I enter into worship, the more I build my own expectation that God is going to move on my behalf. Amen. So we have the helmet of salvation to protect our mind from the lie of the enemy that we're no good, that we're, we're not worth anything, and that we, we're going to end up dead and gone and nobody will ever know who we are. Amen. Instead, we have a whole promise. Not only are we saved so that we can go to heaven, but we have salvation so that we can have deliverance and we can have freedom and we can be overcomers and we can establish God's kingdom on this earth. See, we're not just saved to wait to go to heaven. We're saved so we can walk in victory on this earth. And that's the helmet of salvation. So wherever the enemy would try to lie about places and say that you are losing, you're not victorious, remember that because of the salvation of Jesus Christ, you are victorious over everything the enemy sends your way. See, God is promising us that his presence is our defense. And as we walk in the righteousness of Christ, the enemy cannot overcome that righteousness. That's why we have righteousness. The enemy is, is weaker than the righteousness of Christ. So when we have the righteousness of Christ, we're strong. And we, as we do this, as we walk with the full armor of God, we also continue to establish ourselves in a more intimate relationship with the Lord. Now, here's the thing. When, if you look at the armor that, that was worn, like in medieval times, you know, it's an armor that fully covers the body of a person, that covers their head and everything. And if you would look at the armor that someone was wearing, you wouldn't know who was in that armor. Unless it was marked somehow, or unless you knew the way someone walked, because you recognize people by their walk, maybe. But just looking at the person, you wouldn't know who they were by the armor. So it's interesting to me that the Lord says we should put on the full armor of God, and that part of the armor comes from a place of righteousness and relationship with the Lord. And he's calling us to be so close in relationship to him, come into such a place of intimacy with him that he is our armor. So when the enemy looks for you, all the enemy will see is God. And when the enemy looks for you, he's not going to come against you because he sees God and he knows he's not going to win a fight against God. 
That is why this is a strategic place to be, this ministry. Because when you enter into worship, there's an open door for you to enter into the presence of God. And if you submit yourself to the worship that happens in this place, you are surrounding yourself with the presence of God. So that when you leave here and you go out into the marketplace and you go into your home, there are things out there that may try to come against you, may discourage you, but because the presence of God is more powerful than anything the enemy throws your way, you walk in the presence of God and you establish his truth and his righteousness and his gospel wherever you go. And that's who he's calling you to be. He's calling you to come to this place of intimacy that as you're the warrior bride, that you're so covered by the presence of God, the enemy can't find you even if he looks for you. And then the scripture goes on to say, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, as I, I prayed for you and I felt as if the Lord said it's time to sharpen your sword, let's look at the fact, let's remember the fact that the sword is the word of God. So the sword of the spirit is the written word of God and the rhema word of God. So sharpen your sword. Know God's word. Know his written word and, and receive his rhema word, his revelatory word. One of the things we must remember that whenever a revelation comes from God, it will always line up with his written word. Any revelatory word will align with the written word of God. So if you know his written word, you are, you are ready to easily receive the revelation because you will know that you're walking according to God's will and according to God way, God's ways. He's telling us that we need to enter into a time where we rest in the promise and call upon his word as your weapon. You know his word and his word is your weapon. You know his his written word and that is a weapon so remember I said the enemy comes against you and in, and he sh shoots this fiery dart at you and he says um, you're too weak you're not strong and you put up your shield and the fiery darts hit your shield but then you take your sword and with your sword say in Christ Jesus I have strength for all things and you cut the enemy see you defend yourself and you cut the enemy with the word You've had prophetic words that you were an overcomer. You've had prophetic words that you were a kingdom builder. Who's had a prophetic word that they are going to have finances to build the kingdom of God? Would you stand up? A prophetic word that the Lord was going to bring finances in your hand because you're called to build the kingdom of God. Amen. Who else? Stand up. There you go. Identify with what God has promised you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. This is a good word. It's a word of responsibility, but it's a good word, right? So the enemy would try to tell you that you are not going to be successful. The enemy would put people in your path who will betray you and steal from you. The enemy would try to give you a, a false idea so that you'll go the wrong way. So let, lift your hands before the Lord. Because you're not going to receive those fiery darts of failure. You're not going to receive the fiery dart that the enemy tries to speak to you because he doesn't want you to build the kingdom of God. Father, you see these people have, who have received the word that they are called to be kingdom builders with the finances that you bring into their hands. So, Father, right now we lift our shield of faith. And we quench the fiery dart of the enemy that tells these people they are not good enough, smart enough, or able to do what you've called them to do. And as we quench the fiery dart, we take your sword of your spirit, your word, your promise to these people. And we say, Satan, you are a liar. We cut off even the tongue of the liar that he will no longer be able to say those words. And we, we, as we strike against the enemy, we say, in fact, the word of the Lord is that they will prosper and the kingdom of God will prosper through them. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. See, that's how you do war. 
even as the enemy comes against you, strike him down with the truth of God's word. I felt that the Lord is telling you, that he's telling this ministry, that this is not a time to wait to defend yourself, but it's a time for you to rise up and be an advancing army. It's time for you to begin to take the territory that God has promised you, to push back the enemy and begin to take into your hands. You have family that isn't saved yet. Many of you pray, stood up about that. Now, I'm not saying, when I say this word, I want you to hear me. You have to move according to the will and the strategies of God. So don't go to your family and say, okay, that, that woman in the church said that you were going to, my family's going to be saved, so it's time for you to accept the Lord right now. And they're like, oh, no, oh, no. And so you see them the next day, and you go, okay, you're ready to pray today? We're going to pray today, and you're going to accept Jesus, right? That's not how you go about this. This is a spiritual battle. So you fight it in the spirit realm. You don't fight people face to face. Remember, they're not our enemy. Satan is our enemy. You fight it in the spirit realm. So you lift those people up before the Lord. And you say, Father, I pray that you bless them, that you open their hearts, that you bring them into your kingdom. Lord, send people on assignment that they would begin to plant the seed and water the seed, that my loved one will come into the kingdom. Father, do whatever is necessary, which is not an easy prayer to pray. I know, I don't have time to share it, but I did that for my father, and I had to say, God, do whatever is necessary. My father went through trials, but he came to the Lord. Amen. So give them to God and say, God, do whatever's necessary and bring them into your kingdom. And I'm going to cover them with prayer. And Lord, I'm going to pray that they're not destroyed, but they come to your kingdom. This is what I mean about taking territory. Don't just say, oh, I hope they get saved. Pray on their behalf that God will begin to work and send people so that, in fact, they will be saved. One of the things that we have to know about a sword is the sword is best used as an offensive weapon, meaning coming against the enemy first. If you're in a sword fight and all you do is block the blows of the other person as they're coming against you, you're not beginning to come against your enemy. The only way that you win a fight with a sword fight is you have to strike at the enemy. Isn't that amazing? I mean, don't you think it's just amazing that God chooses the words that he chooses because he knows the truth behind it, right? We may not fully even understand it. So you need to have a sword that's sharp. You need to have a sword that fits your hand. And I, what I see as I look at this congregation, there are some of you who are going to take this word to heart and you're going to begin to recognize how you need to fight the spiritual fight. And I see your swords getting bigger and being sharper. And I see some of you are going to have swords in your hand that if I tried to come and pick it up, I wouldn't be able to lift it because it isn't the anointing that I carry, but it's the anointing that you carry. And as you begin to to walk in the place of warfare that God has called you to walk in to destroy the enemy you are going to begin to see that your battles if you had fought that same battle five years ago you would have been overcome by it but because your sword is more powerful because your shield of faith is bigger because the armor of God is covering you you are going to fight battles and you're going to win very easily it's not going to be the fight it was once once was amen but <clears throat> So you have to use your sword as an offensive weapon. So you strike the enemy with the promises that God has given you. And then when he falls, you drive the sword right through the heart of the lie. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we have to awaken every day and speak God's truth and walk in God's truth because when we do, we're sharpening our sword. And when we do, we're being offensive. We have to get up every day so much so that the devil would say, I wish they would have overslept today. <laughs> right? Because they're awake again and now I have to watch out because here they are. We want to be so annoying to him that he is going to run from us because we walk in the fullness and the power and the authority that God has given us. Because we know the truth and we share the truth. Because when we walk that way, we begin to establish God's kingdom. And as 
<clears throat> Pastor Terrence shared, there are many generals who are going to come out of Asia, and they're going to come because people like you are willing to show them how to walk in authority. They will come because some of you are those generals. They will come because you will pray for those generals, and as they step into the lands throughout Asia, they will begin to step in with authority and begin to spread the kingdom of God. And if you've prayed for one person and they fulfill that call, their reward is your reward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we have to awaken every day, speak God's truth, keep our sword sharp. Remember that as you have a revelation, you are fighting for the church who does not yet have the revelation. There are many in the church who don't know how to fight the fight. They don't recognize who the enemy is. So you're fighting for them to clear the way so they can see the truth. And then they can join us in the battle as well. So we all need <clears throat> to take time before the Lord, to get in the presence of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, in his presence, you will hear him. Spend time in his presence so you can hear him, so you can use his words as weapons against the enemy. Hallelujah. We have to remember that God, through Christ Jesus, is our protection. He is I am. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the door. He is the light of the world. He is the Lamb of God, the Son of the Most High. He is our mediator, our Savior, our Messiah, our Emmanuel, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, our Rock, our Risen Lord, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Victorious One, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the Word. He is the Way. He is the Truth. He is the Life. He is the Vine. He is our Wonderful Counselor, our our mighty God, our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. He is the resurrection and the life, and he is in you. Amen. Amen. With him, you can do all things. With him, you can take the territory that God has called you to take. So are there people in this congregation who need healing? Anybody need healing? Okay, raise your hands. That's fine. If you can stand, stand. All right. So, Father God, you see your people here who need healing. And Lord, we lift our hands up to you. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that by your stripes, we are healed. So, Father, as these people have faith to receive healing, meet their faith and bring healing to their bodies. Lord, give them strength to fulfill the call that you have on their lives. Father, I thank you that even as we've entered into worship, there's an anointing for healing that has been released in this place. That we need to, by faith, step into receiving healing with an expectation that you will give it to us. Now, Father, I thank you that right now we're presenting ourselves to you and say, Lord, I need healing. And you're pouring healing in. And Lord, I thank you that as we do this next prophetic demonstration, that we are going to begin to walk in the healing that you've given us. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you guys may be seated for a moment. Uh, can the worship team come back up? Can the worship team come back up? Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. All right. So while they're coming back up, I, I want to say that during worship, I heard the sound of a marching army. Especially as we sang this song, United Ignited. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And as that song was being sung, I, I heard that there's an aligning of the armies of the Lord. And as you walk the land, you will establish the declaration that is made in that song. And I heard the sound of a marching army that was treading over the land and trampling over the enemy. Now, what I found was interesting is that if we look at the rhythm of the song, it was a slow march, right? It's not a fast pace. It's a slow march. And so, you know, because I'm musical, I love music. And so, I, so I'm like, God, why is, why is this the beat of this song? And he shared to me that it's a slow march so that my people have strength for the distance. 
because the battle may be long. But there is strength to persevere when we march with God. And when we declare the words of those songs, we're marching with God. So what we're going to do is we're going to march around this sanctuary three by three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen? So we're going to do three by three, shoulder to shoulder, and, and we're going to just march down and around, and I'll lead so that you know where we're going, but we're going to march in rhythm to this song. Is that okay? Hallelujah. So wait just a minute. Just wait a minute. I'll tell you what to do. I'm so glad you're excited about this. Amen. But we want to do it in order, right? You know, when the, ta- when the song is move as one, it means we have to do it in order, not any old way. Okay? Shh. So as we do this, I'd like, you know, when just before communion, you sang the verse that started with Emmanuel. Well, can you start with that? And then from there, just flow however you think we need to flow. Okay, but I felt that that declaration unites us. Okay, so um, remember that as we move, as we move, you will see that we're moving as one body, we're moving as one soul, just as you said, and we are moving to fulfill the purposes of God. So we're going to start down there. So can I take this with me? Okay, all right. So I'm going to come here. Vera and Angela, come on. You're going to be with me. And we're going to start marching down this aisle. And so I'd like people three by three to line up behind us. We'll wait till we get some people lined up behind us before we start marching. Thank you. And if you and if the words for the song are up, we can always sing them while we're marching. This is the day of your victory. This is the march of triumph. The march of victory. This is the day that the Lord is going to set you free. day that you're going to see liberty I'm 
They were marching around the walls And the wall came down I literally heard that While you were marching The Lord said That you are now Gaining frontiers For the kingdom And you are now moving Moving into a new movement Of the Holy Spirit A movement that will Propel you forward To your destiny And the enemy Has nothing to stand against you Because you are marching In the unity there is such diversity among you But there is such unity of oneness That the Lord has brought before you And as you march You are going like a spear 
You are going like a mighty sword and a spear that will penetrate the hearts of the enemy and it breaks down the walls of resistance and now you are gaining new ground and I also hear another word that the Lord says I am giving you momentum you are going to have momentum oh the pace may be slow and I, I love the word Susan it's a long distance it's a long distance but you are going to gain momentum and the Lord is going to increase that momentum. Now, it's not the momentum of speed, but it's the momentum of intensity. It's the momentum of passion and intensity that the Lord is releasing upon you. And oh, receive the word right now that you are going to see the frontiers for the kingdom of God. Oh, yes, Lord, I release that word right now over their life walls will come down resistance that has stood in your past season they are coming down and you are going to walk into your new season of victory because this is the march of triumph and the enemy is fleeing from you and the enemy is hiding away because he says here comes an army that is set on fire receive the fire receive the momentum receive the vision receive what god is doing in your life and in your family in your workplace in your ministry it will never be the same again let's leave up your hands church Lord, we receive that. We thank you, Lord, that this is a new dawn, a new beginning of something that is too wondrous for words to describe. Lord, we thank you that great are your promises and we are marching into that. We are marching into the promised land of your promises. And it's a promise that flows with meal and honey. And Lord, we're going to drink and we're going to be nourished by that. It will give us strength to take on another day and another day. And we will keep on marching because Lord, we are pioneering new grounds for the kingdom like never before. And it's not just for the kingdom. Lord, it's for our family. It's for our workplace. It's for the ministry. It's for everything that you have put us in and you have placed us in, Lord. Lord, we thank you that today we will not be confined again because you are giving us the church the voice and the authority to pull down strongholds and to break down barriers. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for the joy of participating in the breath and the move of the Spirit for the nations and for Penang and for Malaysia and for our life and our family and everything which concerns us Lord today is a new beginning it's a new dawn and there is such an anointing even as I'm speaking over you right now receive that oh Rabada Kasa Susan can you come for a while before Stand with me. You, you know, when she showed that, that picture, I, I almost fell off my chair. She didn't notice. That is the picture covering for the coming book. Amen. The bride. <laughs> the, the, the bride with the boots. <laughs> she didn't know that. And that is the spot on where we are a warrior bride. It's from a place of intimacy that we're going to see our inheritance. It's from a place of intimacy we're going to have interaction with God and we're going to have insight and inheritance from the Lord. Father, we bless this woman of God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing her here all the way from America to give us that appointed word, Lord, according to your season, according to your time, according to your purpose. And we thank you that all of heaven today, chorus, it shall come to pass. And Lord, may you bless this woman. Lord, as she travels, Lord, be with her in her going out and her coming in, Lord. Lord, take her safely back to her family 
And Lord, even next year when they come again, especially with Bishop Bill Hammond, and Lord, we, we thank you for greater things that are about to come. Greater things that are about to explode. And I hear that word, expansion and explosion is coming to Asia. Lord, we thank you for being a part of what your Spirit is doing and what your Spirit is saying, Lord, to us, that we can participate in that. We thank you for that, Lord. Bless your people. Bless what you have done today that the enemy cannot steal it. We seal it today, Lord. 